Where are my people? Where are y'all at? <laughs> Gotta have somebody to talk to. <laughs> My half-sister got pregnant when she was 12 and had the baby by the time she was 13. She was doing teen mom before MTV made it cool. So naturally, I was petrified of motherhood. What I knew of motherhood in real life wasn't what you read about. It was the stuff nightmares were made of. Now, apparently, it's just the stuff MTV contracts are made of. So when I landed in the hospital, at 12 years of age, scheduled to have a major surgery on my right ovary, and the doctors all agreeing I would never have children, I was pretty okay with it. After all, I was still totally into Powerpuff Girls and sparkly lip gloss. I wore pigtails and jelly shoes, and I listened to Whitney Houston and Karen Carpenter. I was still weird, taken by the idea of adventure and the wonder of love. I wasn't thinking about babies. I was still figuring out how to shave. Thanks to my mother, who decided I would remain looking like the body double as Chewbacca until I was um, old enough to have my period. <laughs> I didn't get my period, you guessed it, until I was 13. The same month I found myself having a large cyst on my ovary that was making me deathly sick. That same cyst landed me in the hospital, bleeding for a month and awaiting emergency surgery. That same cyst brought doctors into my life at 12 years of age who, who used words like infertile, and too much damaged tissue for a viable fetus. Imagine my surprise when I find, find out only five months later after marriage that I had a positive pregnancy test in hand. When I tell my story, my medical history, and the fact that I am not only a mother of one, but three little people who escaped my uterus, <laughs> people always gush, Jasmine, you have miracles. Those pregnancies are miracles. I'm here to confess a deep guilt that these sort of comments create in me. My babies are miracles, so I should never be upset or a mess about their existence, right? I should always be squishy and thankful and because, well, they're miracles. Well, in 12-step tradition, I am going to make some confessions. <laughs> I'm gonna free us all of the guilt and shame that has kept us sick in motherhood. I've prepared a list. If you're not at a place to join me in your confession, just say pass. Each of us works recovery at our own pace. <laughs> Number one, miracles do sometimes require you to cheat at Candyland. <laughs> <clears throat> Lie about Nickelodeon cartoons being canceled. <laughs> and wonder what would happen if Dora decided to find work outside of exploration. <laughs> two, Miracles sometimes require you to pretend that you're asleep <laughs> in hopes that your partner will wake up and get the baby. I mean miracle. <laughs> because you can't take holding the miracle one moment longer. Three, miracles make you wonder what life might have been like without WebMD. Milestone emails that convince you your child will just never crawl the way they're supposed to. And Dr. Sears guilting you about your inadequate miracle management skills. Four, Miracles, at least in my case, suddenly make my mother's frequent turn of phrase make sense. She'd exclaim in a fit, if I had a glass of piss, you'd want a drink of it. <laughs> true story, true story. <laughs> However gross that may be, now that I have my own miracles, I share the sentiment. Speaking of pee, Miracles mean you'll never pee alone again, <laughs> ever. Number six, miracles make you freaked out about pesticides, toxins, predators, high fructose corn syrup, vaccinations, death, God, sexuality, other miracles in education. <laughs> I'm not neurotic, I swear. Seven, miracles sometimes require you adding grown-up ingredients to things like orange juice, coffee, <laughs> slushies, Coca-Cola products. <laughs> okay, who am I kidding? Everything. <laughs> Miracles, wanted and unwanted, are taxing, confusing, and difficult. As a woman who was never supposed to have miracles in her life, I'm constantly afraid and simultaneously in awe of their existence. My miracles have grown me into the most beautiful and neurotic woman. They've created in me strength, hope, and faith. They've brought me to my knees, humbling who I thought I was and who I thought I should be. My first miracle asked me what Easter was about the other day while we were grocery shopping. 
I fumbled. I was taken off guard and I felt pressure to give the best answer. I could have said, there was this dude, he died, and then he came back to life again. But I thought the whole zombie Jesus approach might be an inappropriate story for a four-year-old. So I decided to keep it general. I said something about getting second chances, how second chances are miraculous, and how God loves all of us. I told him that Easter happened in a way that people never expected. I told him it was hard to explain because people don't really know how Easter happened, but that it was a miracle. Isaiah said, it was my first miracle, he knows about my struggles with fertility and how he just happened. He understands that his story, how he came to be in our family, is a complicated one. I stood in the middle of the grocery store looking at Isaiah, hoping and praying my Easter miracle explanation had satisfied his curiosity. With a huge smile and a laugh, he said, oh, so I'm your Easter. <laughs> he got it. It was as simple as that. Sometimes, miracles make you sob loudly in the middle of the grocery store. Thank you. <laughs>